So for French 7.7 .7, you got both the uh, Uragan and the Barugan. And they're essentially the same plane. The Uragan is a little bit lighter and it doesn't have the ordnance. It also has gear cover for the wheels. And it weighs a whopping 50 kilograms less. But next to that they're essentially the same plane. And I still advise you to play the, the Barugan which is this one. Because it has the snap rocket pods. These rocket pods are a lot more effective to ground striking. Especially in RRB. Because all you have to do is... Pen the tank, pen the light pillbox and it instantly dies. You got a lot more of them than for say the, the rip of HVAS. So I would say just go with this thing. If you get a good dude camping space. If you get a bomber just hiding somewhere. You can still win on tickets. Whereas in the, the Uragan that's a lot harder. For the gameplay today I will start off with some clips. Some reversals, some small dogfights and some uh, furballs. And in the end I will have a full game. And I'm doing this because the plane is a bit weird. So I'm putting the situations the, the very specific things first and then you can scroll to the end if you want to i put a timestamp on the bottom right so if you want to go to the full game you can just go over there so right there i could have chased the f7 up but there's no way i'm gonna catch him so instead i will drop my nose get some speed back up make him think i don't have the energy to pull with him i don't actually but i don't want to stall out make him greedy that's exactly what i'm doing right here and he took the bait he's sticking on me I don't see his afterburner anymore, so I'm quite sure that he is trouble dropping me. Which is exactly what I want him to do, because I do outturn him actually. So I just pull him into this rolling scissor. Kind of bait the shot. And he starts to pull in. Gets close, and at this point he's basically dead. Then I see a red wingtip, and I'm not having any of that, so I'll just take that off. Thank you. Yeah, I'm side climbing a little bit. And I see an A5 and I know that A5s really like to take head-ons and because he is going substantially faster than me I'm quite confident I can win a dogfight. Sounds a bit counterintuitive I know but A5s really like to just pull straight and that's exactly, exactly what he does. He outturns me at those speeds but the problem with him is that uh, I was a lot slower so I cut into his loop. Which is exactly what I hope for him to do. A5 pilots mostly just rush in. Either try to come in in a head-on. That's why it was so sketchy. And I can see that this one is coming right for me. So I'm 100% sure he tries to head-on me. So, same story. I'm a lot slower than him. So I'm going to try to cut into his loop. The problem is he actually goes vertical. I don't want to abuse my flaps too much. Because I will dump all of my speed. So I pull him back in after I close the gap. Or I turn around. I crit him... And I'm out of energy to pull up my nose. But it's not a problem. He comes the meteor. To yoink the kill. And that's 2A5. In basically no time at all. Of course it's a bit situational. Which is why I'm putting these at the start. And which is also why I told you to maybe go to the end. Because this plane is a bit based upon luck. Of course if you start dogfighting people. Then it com becomes even. But the problem is if people don't dogfight you, you're kind of boned. It's the same as with Meteors, where you turn quite well. But if people just ignore you, you basically can't do anything in an up tier, which most of your games will be at 8.7. So keep that in mind. This L4, that his mistake is going in the vertical with this thing. He might have better acceleration, but my retention is miles better than his. So I'm not going to use my flaps. I'm just going to keep turning and I will out energy him in the long run. I'm using the, the flaps in the downward movement right here to, to gain that little bit of extra turn rate while I still pick up speed because it's a downward move. And now I'm noticing that our energy states are roughly the same. So I start dropping my flaps to outturn him again. And so I lose a little bit of speed to stay behind him. And you can see that at this point I'm using my flaps. And he's not outrunning me anymore. Because the G91 R1... Or the R4 in this case, or the R3, or whatever R, G91R, they don't have the best kind of retention. So you can abuse that quite well. And he was a lot faster than me, so I was behind him from the start. Which is something that is very handy indeed. First head-on wasn't anything special, it's a swift, he compresses. So I was hoping that he couldn't dodge that. And he didn't, which is perfect. The next two games will have a lot of target prioritization in them. So if that's something you're struggling with... I know that a lot of people are struggling with, with that kind of thing and it's kind of hard to, to find suitable things where I can really emphasize on target prioritization. And mostly with planes like this, the, the planes that aren't the best, it's very well, easy to showcase but it's not the easiest thing to do. So I crit the MiG-15, he is pretty much dead, the C2B is very slow, 
And he's right next to the airfield. And I don't want him to land and rearm. And get his rocket fuel back. This 15 is still crit. He won't be much of a trouble. He's going right down. He's probably going to pull out. Not a problem. The Yak-23 behind me that I'm looking at right now won't catch me in time. So I can go up and kill this F-84G. I can help the, the guy with the Yak-23 right now. But doing that will give this F-84 a very easy job of just boomer zooming me forever. And me dying in the long run. Because the F-84G will keep up with you. And if he has a lot more speed than you, yeah, you're basically boned. The Big 15 is going back to base. So he's not much of a problem. And the Yak-23 is much of a problem. So I wanted to kill him as he was engaging our Yak-30. For two reasons. I wanted to keep the Yak-30 alive. And the other part is... If a Yak-23 is occupied with someone else, he is quite easy to hit. As you saw, he barely moved. He only moved in the last second. But it was too late for him. And now I'm just going to strafe the last MiG-15. I, I crit him already. So I missed 100 rounds. And I got to secure my kills. And that's it. It's very short. Very short wall. But, and if you struggle with that. And if it's not completely clear. Feel free to ask me down in the comments. I might do, do it a little more elaborate. If you want that. And the last kill was a bomber. I took a steal of 95 rounds. And he flew for a bit. Then I tried to ram his wing off and he flew into the ground. And this is the full game. Back with Razor. Rushing straight in. Shallow climb, keeping that 800 kph. You don't want to go much faster because this thing basically stops accelerating. Not that it accelerates that well on low speed to begin with. But it stops accelerating altogether when you're a lot slower, faster. So for now I just want to go slowly into these clouds. I don't want to turn too hard because I will bleed all of my speed. And at this point, I'm just going to Vulture. F-84G on the deck. I can easily dive on him and kill him. But I don't really see the worth in that. But then I can see that he's coming up. I can see that he's coming close. Quite close. And by diving, I won't exceed 800 kph. So I wouldn't waste that much speed. And that's the only reason I'm going for him. Then I lost him. He's there. And now he's too low. I don't see the reason to go for him anymore. Even though he was an easy kill. It would have jeopardized the game in the long run. Skip him. Go for the left one. Because he's behind the one in front. I don't know what they are yet. If there's a MiG-15. And there's a guy next to him. He's further away. I can't turn with either of them. This guy turns right in front of me. If I had gone for one of the other two that are in front of me. The F-84 and the MiG-15. I would have let the Sea Hawk right on my 6. Which is what I don't want. And here I'm doing it again. I'm going for the A5 instead of the other two right in front of me. Because he's in the last one of the pack. Sometimes it's a bit hard to see who is here, where. Mostly because of clouds. I mean, you don't see the, the you don't see their speeds. And you don't see how, how far away they are. Which makes it a bit more difficult. The A5 is going back to base. I'm not too sure what the F84 is. But I think I'm clear for now. MiG-15 doesn't really seem to be paying attention to me. And I'm not going to keep up with him at all. And there's more up there. And I can zoom up for him right here. I can try to get the shot. It's quite risky. So I'm not going to do it. There's three people next to me. I'm probably spotted. They probably know that I'm here. So I don't want to go straight vertical. I'm only going 500. The chance I would have gotten that shot is very low to begin with. So it's not worth the risk. More turning with the MiG-15. He's a little bit damaged. I'm not too sure what I damaged. But MiG-15 with damage at all isn't the most enjoyable thing to fly. The gap between me and the 15 starts diminishing and then I get a crit. And I'm basically certain that I killed his engine with that first burst. Because look at how slow he is. Didn't have an air breakout. I got a crit so I think I just ruined his engine. Stay behind him in case he tries to pull in on me. F-89 coming out of nowhere. Luckily I heard him. I say luckily I heard him but I didn't see him at all. I just got quite lucky. Clouds are a bitch. Sometimes they give, sometimes they take. He's coming back. There's the F-84 that I was looking for. Try to get a pot shot and I just get a hit, which is unfortunate. And now I just want to put as much distance as I can between me and the Ki-200. I can dogfight both of these two guys. The F-89 and the F-84G isn't much of a problem. They both turn a bit like a brick. At least compared to, 
because the F-89 is a lot faster and the F-84 is slower than me I want to make the F-89 overshoot as quickly as I can and then put all my attention on the F-84 because I just need to get out of that AOA zone with his 50 cal spray and by going in the spiral right here I can easily just stall him out he won't be much of a problem looked at the F-89 to see if I could get a shot but I didn't have enough energy for that and if I had pulled after him I would have stalled higher and the F-84G would have probably been able to just nose up and kill me I use my flaps to slow down a little bit and turn better which makes my loop or my turn a bit tighter so that the F-89 can get the guns on lower my flaps until I flip over F-89 is stalling himself out so he's out of the game basically I pull my flaps up to get my speed back and there goes his wing and we're diving out Kia 200 is RTB which is fantastic if that guy didn't get engaged as I started that little 2v well not really 2v1 because my team was right there I would have been 100% toast and as well as I didn't have my team right there I'm not too sure if I would have been able to kill the F-89 as well but if he had kept the pressure on I probably would have, wouldn't have been able to stall myself out and then loop over to kill the F-84 and that's one of the things with the, the Baru gun like you, you, you can't get away with a lot of stuff. The 1v1s are great in this thing. It's quite fun to, to dogfight people like A5s, G91s and all that kind of stuff. It's great. But the 2v1s, it just doesn't have enough energy. And it's quite reliant on the enemy plane, not boom and zooming you. Because on average, you will be slower than the enemy player. And when it's 2v1, uh, that deficit of energy will be your death. And of course, it's not a build game without getting randomly hit by a truck driving along the road, shooting through the trees at a plane that's going 750 kph at 3 kilometers. But you know, that's just how builds is. There's some really uh, good AA crews on this map as well as on some other ones. But builds has been uh, the best ones for me so far. But about the energy deficit on 1v1, as you can see on the, the first A5, when they really commit to that turn, if they really keep turning, being slower in this plane isn't a death sentence. Of course against meteors and stuff it is, and 163s. But in general in this plane it's doable, because your attention is good enough so that you can equalize the energy. The problem however is that, as I said before, when there's multiple and you're out of energy, you might outturn the first one, but by the time you killed the first guy, the second guy will have so much more energy on you, that he will most likely come back from another angle even if he's not paying attention if he's even if he's not even trying to boom and zoom you there's a very big chance that he comes in from an angle that you can't really dodge anymore and once you're going like 400 and he comes in like that you're basically dead so keep that in mind don't think that this is the best carry plane of course in a down tier it's very strong except you never really get down tiered so that's really not that relevant but in down tiers this thing is amazing it's a bit like the f84g except that you can actually outturn people and now i got four kills and an assist i wanted to make the ace complete by uh, diminishing the the steel but that mig 15 is just gonna climb away like that it's gonna keep climbing and the game is gonna last well you can guess how long that this game is going to last it's not uh I was kind of upset about this because he got missiled and he didn't even move. Bamboozled. Decided to put this little thing behind it anyway because otherwise it doesn't look very uh, convincing when the video is going to end in 10 seconds and I say it's going to last forever. But this gameplay, I'm not too sure what I think of it. It's not the best, it's not the worst, but I thought I might as well just put it into it. Go ahead on with the Meteor. I'm just going to ignore him for now. He's nowhere near fast enough to outturn me and then catch me again. I'm just going to chase his A5 for now because he is definitely a high priority target. He does most things better than me, which is annoying. And I'm a lot faster than him at this point and I can easily kill him. Uh, and there he goes. He didn't really go defensive in time. He just tried a dolphin. And when you dolphin in a very predictable manner, you're not going to get very far. He doesn't have a tail. I don't want to spend too much ammo on him. And I see that he's going down now. So I'm not going to waste any more ammo. I'm just going to let him fly right into the ground. Check the airfield to see if there's not someone coming right from there as I turn around for the B-57. The last thing I want right now is an F-84 and the 163 air spawning there and just getting on my ass. The Meteor is quite slow. Hard to tell but you know I can see by the closing distance I'm going 850. He isn't, he isn't going that speed by a long shot. He's going about 400-500. 
Of course, I'm not a med medical genius that can detect how fast he's going, but I could see that he was substantially slower than me. Which is enough. He's pretty much flying straight. He's very slow. He's not going to dodge anything. I crit him. Kill one of his engines, as you can see, and he rolls right into it. He doesn't have near the, the SP to really go defensive. So, easy kill. See a Seahawk coming in. I move my camera out of the way so I can control my plane with only the keyboard. But then I see what he's doing. I'm just going to dodge the head on. I'm just going to try to stall him out. Check the airfield again to see if there's not someone coming out from the loop over. He doesn't have the speed. He just took off. I'm just going to dive back down on him. He is so slow that I just... Just kidding. These guns just don't work. I don't know what it is. Some planes just really don't like to die. I'm kind of sad that he killed that F-80. Because I really wanted to clean up this game. But at this point I got the... Seahawk crit. And I aim too low. Because of the bullet mounted guns. I have to aim a little bit higher. Because the guns are of course on the, on the cheeks. So if you aim right on people... Chances are that you will shoot right below them, which is something you don't want to happen because these guns aren't the best to begin with. And this Uragan just took off. Of course, he has that 50 kilogram advantage, but I have 7 minutes, minutes of fuel less, so I turn and accelerate quite substantially better than him. I'm just gonna loop up. I don't know why the F84 or the F89 went head on there. The Seahawk was clearly very slow, clearly very damaged, and this F-89 just full commits and dies. Which is very unfortunate, and I see everyone doing it lately. And there's the Uragan, he's crit. I have 74 rounds left. And I'm just gonna try to clean this guy up. I'm... Did I get a hit there? I can't really see on my replay, I thought I did, but if I didn't, it doesn't really matter. Now I get the hit at least. Just gonna loop back over. Don't want to abuse my flaps too much again because I don't want to stall out. I want to catch him after this dive because he's going right back to base. So I want to kill him as fast as I can. So I'm just going to spray him down pretty much. And I just get a bunch of hits and he actually proceeds to land. And then take off and then get strafed by a B-57. Hope you enjoyed it. Quite a fun plane if, as long as you don't get focused. I'm going to wish you a nice weekend. I'll probably be back on the Sunday with the G91 R3 video with the new matchmaker. So see you in that one and have a good night.